ever stared at a roller coaster and thought, could I build that? Today, we're shrinking those big engineering ideas down to your kitchen table. No fancy tools or giant budgets, just cardboard, tape, scissors, and a marble. We'll turn these basics into a gravity-defying roller coaster. You're the chief engineer making every design choice. Our goal, understand the physics of fun, how a marble at rest becomes a blur of motion. We'll see how energy lets it conquer loops and twists. This is hands-on science, not just a craft. Trial and error is the name of the game. Each tweak brings you closer to an awesome machine. Ready to unleash your inner engineer? We're not just building a toy. We're building a machine that shows off the laws of physics. See science in action right in your home. Let's build a real working roller coaster right now. Today, you're not just a rider, you're the creator. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here's the challenge. Build a marble roller coaster with a working loop. The marble must start high, race down, and complete a full vertical loop. This is all about turning potential energy into kinetic energy. Start with a tall ramp for speed, then design a loop that keeps the marble on track. Real engineering means testing, failing, and improving. Each failure is a clue to make your design better. You'll design three sections, the starting ramp, the loop, and a finish tray. The ramp's height is crucial. It's your energy source. The loop tests your balance of speed and shape. The finish tray catches your marble safely. You're the architect, builder, and test pilot. I'll show you my approach, but experiment with your own ideas. Can you make it faster? Add a second loop? Try a jump? The only limits are your imagination and physics. Ready for the challenge? Grab your supplies and let's build. Every engineer needs tools, but ours are simple. First, cardboard. Thick for supports, thin for track. Scavenge boxes, cereal cartons, or poster board. Next, tape. Packing, masking, or duct tape will do. Tape is our welding. It holds everything together. You'll need scissors or a box cutter. Ask for help if needed. Safety first. For the ride, use a marble. Heavy enough to build momentum. No marble? Try a steel ball or bouncy ball. The key, something round and heavy enough to roll smoothly. Grab a ruler or measuring tape for accuracy. Measure ramp height, loop diameter, and track length. This turns guesses into real experiments. So, cardboard, tape, scissors, marble, ruler. That's your toolkit. Ready to build? Let's get started. The starting ramp is where all the action begins. The higher you start, the more energy your marble has. Use thin cardboard to make a U-shaped channel for the track. Make it just wide enough for the marble to roll smoothly. Build sturdy supports from thick cardboard to give your ramp height. A steeper ramp means more speed. Experiment with angles. Test your ramp. Place the marble at the top and let it go. Watch closely. Does it stay in the track? Is it fast enough? If it flies out, raise the walls. If it's slow, make it steeper. This is real engineering tweak, test, repeat. Each adjustment gets you closer to the perfect ramp. Don't worry about perfection, just keep improving. The ramp sets the stage for everything that follows. Ready for the next step? Let's move on to the loop. The fun is just beginning. Time for the main event, the vertical loop. The marble needs enough speed to stay on track even upside down. Shape a flexible piece of cardboard into a small loop. Start with a four, six inch diameter. Smaller loops are easier for the marble to conquer. Connect the loop smoothly to your ramp, no sharp corners. Add supports to keep the loop steady. Test it, let the marble go and watch. If it falls, check your ramp height or loop size. Too slow, make the ramp higher. Loop too big, make it smaller. This is the toughest part, don't give up. Each test teaches you something new. Adjust, test, and repeat. When the marble makes it through, you've mastered the loop. That's real engineering in action. Ready for the finish? After the loop, your marble needs a safe stop. Build a flat level section at the end. This is your finish tray. As the track flattens, friction slows the marble down. Add a small box or enclosure at the end to catch it. Make sure the walls are high enough to keep the marble in. Smooth transitions are key, no bumps. Time for a full test. Start at the top, let the marble go, and watch the journey. It should race down, loop around, and stop safely. Congratulations, you've built a working roller coaster. You turn simple materials into a machine that shows off real physics. Now, try optimizing, make it faster, add twists, or build a second loop. The engineering adventure never ends. What will you build next? So our roller coaster works. The marble goes down the ramp, through the loop, and into the finish tray. But what is the invisible force that makes it all happen? The answer is energy, and it starts with potential energy. Think of potential energy as stored energy. It's the energy an object has because of its height. 
When you lift that marble to the top of the starting ramp, you are loading it up with potential energy. The higher you lift the marble, the more potential energy you give it. Potential energy equals mass times the acceleration of gravity times height. So when you look at your marble sitting silently at the top of your track, remember that it's buzzing with potential. Every drop, every hill, and every bit of speed that follows begins with this simple, invisible, stored power. Okay, so we've got our marble at the top, full of potential energy. Now what? The moment you let it go, something amazing happens. That stored potential energy begins to transform into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. If an object is moving, it has kinetic energy. The faster it moves, the more kinetic energy it has. As your marble rolls down the ramp, its height decreases, which means its potential energy is decreasing. But it's also picking up speed, which means its kinetic energy is increasing. One form of energy is turning directly into another. The equation for kinetic energy is also pretty cool. Kinetic energy equals one half times the mass times the velocity squared. So, eek equals one half mv squared. The mass of our marble stays the same. The key variable here is velocity, or speed. And notice that the velocity is squared in the equation. This is super important. If you double the speed of your marble, you don't just double its kinetic energy, you actually quadruple it. Speed has a huge impact on the amount of energy the marble carries. Think about the journey down the ramp. At the very top, the marble's velocity is zero. So its kinetic energy is zero. All its energy is potential. As it rolls down, the height drops and the speed increases. The potential energy is being cashed in for kinetic energy. By the time the marble reaches the very bottom of the ramp, it's at its lowest point. At that exact moment, its speed is at its maximum. Almost all of that initial potential energy has been converted into the raw, powerful energy of motion. This conversion is the engine of our roller coaster. We are not creating energy out of thin air. We are just changing its form. This is called the conservation of energy, which states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one type to another. For our coaster, it's a direct transfer from the energy of position to the energy of motion. This kinetic energy is what we'll need to successfully conquer the loop. The loop demonstrates an energy trade-off. The marble enters the loop with kinetic energy. As it climbs, it gains potential energy, slowing down. This exchange happens throughout the ride. Think of it as an energy bank account. Potential energy is deposited at the top. It converts to kinetic energy as the marble races down. Enough kinetic energy is needed to reach the loop's top. A low starting ramp means less initial potential energy. The marble might not make it, but friction and air resistance steal energy. This energy loss converts to heat or sound. The marble won't reach its original height. Engineers must overcome this energy loss with good design. We've talked about energy, but there's another crucial force at play. Centripetal force. Centripetal force is any force that makes an object move in a circle. It's the center-seeking force that constantly pulls the object towards the center. Think about swinging a ball on a string. The string pulling the ball inward is centripetal force. In our roller coaster, the walls of the track act like that string. The track pushes the marble inward, forcing it to follow the loop. At the top of the loop, centripetal force is still needed. It comes from the track and gravity. Gravity helps provide some of the centripetal force. If the marble is too slow, gravity will be stronger and it will fall. Speed unlocks the power of centripetal force. How do we design a loop that works? The physics gives us a formula. Fc equals mv squared over r. Mass, m, is fixed. Velocity, v, depends on the ramp. We control the radius, r. Radius is in the denominator, so a smaller radius means less force needed. Smaller loops are easier. Modern roller coasters use teardrop shapes, tighter at the top. This clothoid loop has a changing radius wide at the entry, tight at the top where speed is slowest. Craft your loop like this. Make the top tighter than the sides. This lowers the speed needed at the top, increasing your chance of success. A small change can make a big difference. Let's look at the moment the marble is at the peak of the loop. To stay on the track, the marble must be moving with a certain critical velocity. This is the minimum speed it needs to complete the loop. If its speed is less, it will detach from the track and fall. If it's faster, it will just press against the track with more force. Our goal is to ensure our marble speed is above this critical threshold. At the top of the loop, gravity pulls the marble down. Any slower, and gravity's pull is too strong and the marble falls. This is why our starting height is so important. 
we need enough potential energy to maintain that critical velocity at the top of the loop. A higher start means more speed. This is the ultimate balancing act. Release your marble and watch it closely as it goes through the loop. Does it seem to almost float or even separate from the track at the top? Maybe add a little more height to your ramp. This is precision engineering and you are in complete control. Our roller coaster works. Now can we make it better and faster? This is the optimization phase where we fine tune our design. The most direct way to increase speed is to give the marble more energy at the start by increasing the height of the initial drop. Let's try it. Stack books under the supports, build longer support legs, or move to the edge of a table for a steeper drop. More height means more potential energy, resulting in more kinetic energy and higher speeds. After increasing the height, run tests and observe the difference. What if you can't build higher? Add a booster ramp mid-track for another kick of speed. This is advanced coaster design, creating a multi-stage machine for maximizing speed and excitement. So far, we focused on increasing the energy we put into the system. But uh, what about reducing the energy that the system loses? Our biggest enemy in the quest for speed is friction. Every time the marble touches the cardboard track, a tiny amount of its precious kinetic energy is converted into heat due to friction, slowing it down. The rough, fibrous surface of cardboard isn't the smoothest material to roll on. If we can reduce this friction, more of the marble's energy will be dedicated to speed and our coaster will perform better. This is where we can experiment with different materials to find a slicker track surface. Let's conduct an experiment. Try lining the inside of your cardboard track with different materials. A great first choice is smooth packing tape. Carefully lay strips of clear packing tape along the entire path where the marble rolls, creating a much smoother surface. Another option could be to cut up a plastic folder and glue the slick plastic pieces into your track. You could even try lining the track with aluminum foil, though you'll need to be careful to make it as smooth as possible. Each of these materials has a lower coefficient of friction than raw cardboard, meaning they will steal less energy from our rolling marble. Once you've upgraded your track surface, it's time to test and compare the results. Before you run the marble, make a prediction. Which material do you think will be the fastest? Now release the marble from the exact same starting height you used for your cardboard-only tests. This is a crucial part of good science, only changing one variable at a time. You should see a noticeable improvement in speed. The marble will not only move faster, but will also travel farther and maintain its velocity for longer. The difference between a raw cardboard track and a tape line track can be truly surprising. This exploration into materials is what real world engineering is all about. Engineers are constantly searching for new alloys, composites, and lubricants to reduce friction and improve efficiency in everything from car engines to spacecraft. For roller coasters, the wheels and the track are made of specialized steel alloys designed for minimal friction and maximum durability. By lining your cardboard track with tape, you are doing the exact same thing, selecting a better material for the job to overcome a physical challenge. You are optimizing your design not just with geometry, but with material science. Now that's some next level engineering. We've built a cardboard coaster and seen physics in action. How does our marble track compare to gigantic steel coasters? The core principles are the same. The tallest roller coaster starts with a lift hill. A chain lift pulls the train to the top, loading it with potential energy. That first drop fuels the rest of the ride. A real coaster train plummets down that first hill, reaching high speeds. It's a massive scale version of our experiment. Potential energy converts into kinetic energy. Coasters use kinetic energy to climb hills and navigate complex elements. It's the same energy trade-off with millions of dollars of steel. Real coasters have extra tricks. Some use launch systems for a burst of speed. These use compressed air, hydraulics, or electromagnets. They accelerate the train from zero to highway speeds. It's like an invisible hand giving the coaster a push. Track shapes apply the physics we explored. Real world designers use computer calculations to manage forces. The goal, a thrilling but safe ride. From cardboard to giga coasters, the science of motion makes it possible. Building a fast ride is one thing, but real roller coasters need to stop safely. Most modern coasters use magnetic brakes. Magnets on the train interact with metal fins on the track creating opposing magnetic fields. This slows the train smoothly without touching. Safety is the number one priority. Every component is over-engineered. Wheels lock the train to the track. Notice the chain lift building potential energy and the magnetic brakes bringing it to a safe stop. Our cardboard coaster is a model of impressive engineering, 
Understanding the physics reveals how these machines work. We've reached the end of our engineering journey. We started with cardboard and a marble and created a thrill-delivering machine. Now it's time for a head-to-head -head competition, a roller coaster race. I've built two different coasters. Coaster A is our original design. Coaster B is our upgraded model with optimizations. Its track is lined with smooth packing tape to reduce friction, and it features a more efficient teardrop-shaped clothoid loop. I will release two marbles at the same time. This race is a test of design and smart engineering. The marbles are set, the race is about to begin. Go, they accelerate, and you can already see a difference. The marble on coaster B whips through its teardrop loop, maintaining its speed. It lands safely in its finish tray before the other marble. The winner is optimized engineering. That race was an absolute blast, and it perfectly illustrates the power of applying scientific principles to your design. Simply making the loop a better shape and the track a little smoother made a huge difference in performance. But this is not the end of the story. In fact, it's the beginning of yours. I've shown you the fundamentals of how to build a roller coaster and the physics that makes it work. I've shown you how to optimize it for speed. Now the challenge is officially passed to you. I've shown you what I can do with some cardboard and tape, but I genuinely believe you can do even better. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take everything we've learned today and build the fastest, most creative, and most awesome roller coaster you can imagine. Can you design a coaster with two loops or a terrifying corkscrew? What about a daring jump where the marble flies through the air and lands on another track? The possibilities are endless. Use your knowledge of potential energy to build taller ramps. Use your understanding of centripetal force to design wild and complex track elements. Experiment with different materials to find the ultimate low friction surface. This is your chance to be the engineer. This is more than just a project, it's a way of thinking. The process of designing, building, testing, failing, and improving is at the heart of all science and engineering. It's about being curious, asking questions, and not being afraid to try something that might not work. Every failed attempt is just a new piece of data that gets you one step closer to a breakthrough. So embrace the process, get your hands dirty, cover your floor in little bits of cardboard and tape, and create something that is uniquely yours. The only limit is your imagination and the laws of physics. And when you've built your masterpiece, I wanna see it. Film your roller coaster in action, show off its coolest features and prove how fast it is. Share your creations online because the best part of science and engineering is sharing your discoveries with others so we can all learn and be inspired. Upload your video and tag us so we can all see the amazing solutions you come up with. The challenge has been issued. The world is waiting to see your engineering genius. Now go out there and build something incredible. I can't wait to see what you create.